Hi everybody, welcome to my homestead and welcome to my channel. In this video, we're gonna talk about what it means to leave your father's house and uh, family and friends and stuff like that. And what does it say in the scriptures? If you haven't already, please make sure to subscribe, like this video if you end up liking it, hit the notification bell, leave comments, and then make sure to share this video on your social media. So um, this is a concept, you know, I've kind of been thinking about for the last few years, really. And, um, you know, when you, when you grow up in the church, or like when you think about the church, it's very family centered. Right. And I think just in general with society, there's, <clears throat> there's a, there's family values and um, <clears throat> family is like a really important thing. It's an important thing in other religions and cultures. Um, and, and I think that that's really good. Right. But on the flip side, I think there are times when it's appropriate to um, basically separate yourself from family if that's what you need to do to survive spiritually or even psychologically. Um, let me just share a few scriptures with you that kind of back this idea up. And, um, you know, they may initially kind of go against what you think, but, you know, this is all scripturally based. Um, I'm going to start off with uh, Matthew. 10 um third let's see i lost it <laughs> um i got it um okay now this is okay matthew 10 verse 34 think not that i am come to send peace this is christ himself talking okay think not that I'm come to send peace on earth. Now, that already, right off the bat, that kind of goes against what we think about Christ, right? Because <clears throat> we think of him as someone that's like a very peaceful, maybe like a Gandhi-like figure or something like that. And uh, I actually think that that's something that Satan kind of pushes in certain ways to get you to think that, no, you're not supposed to stand up for your values because it, it could cause contention or, you know, you need to stay with your family because family is the most important thing or, or you know, stuff like that. But Christ himself, he says here, think not that I am come to send peace on earth. I came not to send peace, but a sword. Uh, verse 35, for I am come to set a man at variance against his father and the daughter against her mother and the daughter-in-law against her mother-in-law. And a man's foes shall be they of his own household. He that loveth father and mother more than me is not worthy of me. And he that loveth son or daughter more than me is not worthy of me. Um, and he that taketh not his cross and followeth after me is not worthy of me. He that findeth his life shall lose it. And he that loseth his life uh, for my sake, shall find it. So I don't think Christ here is saying <clears throat> he's come to like upset families. But the, the fact of the matter is, if you go, if you look at any given family, pretty much any given family, you're always going to have people that uh, don't want to obey the gospel or that, you know, they don't believe in Christ or they don't believe in the church or whatever. And <clears throat> we know that part of the reason why we've come here is to be tested and ultimately to be sifted and categorized. And after this life, there's like one of four places that you can go. Uh, what we're trying to do is we're trying to get as many as people as possible to go to the social kingdom. Um, but not everyone is going to choose to do that. And there are, you know, there is the terrestrial, telestial, and then outer darkness, which not many people will go there. But, um, you know, there's three other places you can go other than the celestial kingdom. Um, depending on how you live your life. And, you know, what I think he's saying here is that there are times when, you know, you need to choose Christ over a family member or over a friend, you know, over anybody. You know, he should be first and foremost in our lives. Um, there's another uh, thing I want to share here. This, this is in the book of Abraham. Okay, and this is basically the same concept. Um, in the land of the Chaldeans, so this is in the area of like Iraq, okay? In the land of, of the Chaldeans, 
at the residence of my father's, I, Abraham, saw that it was needful for me to obtain another place of, re of residence. Uh, in finding there was a greater happiness and peace and rest for me, I sought for the blessings of the fathers uh, in the same right unto which, whereunto I would be ordained to administer the same, having been myself a follower of righteousness, desiring also to be one who possessed great knowledge and to be a, great, a greater follower of righteousness and to possess a greater knowledge um, and uh, to be a father of many nations, a prince of peace, and desiring to receive instructions and to keep the commandments of, of God, <clears throat> I became a rightful heir, a high priest, holding the right belonging to the fathers. So, you know, this, this is basically how <clears throat> most of us uh, that are in the church, uh, those that are righteous, start out, right? Uh, even like before we came here to this life, we wanted to have these same things because we know that the end goal is to go to the celestial kingdom, become like our father in heaven and have our own children and, and uh, nations and, and people, right? So it's like, when you look at the life of Abraham, it's kind of like looking at um, the path of a righteous person, just like, just like Adam, just like, you know, whoever, but uh, Abraham is a great example of, of the path that a righteous person seeks. They realize that they can't stay stuck in one place they need further knowledge they need further um wisdom and so they they seek after it and they and they seek these blessings um okay now skipping down uh to verse five so this is abraham chapter one by the way and now uh in verse five my father is having turned from their righteousness and from the holy commandments which the lord god had given unto them unto the worshiping of the gods of the heathen uh, utterly refused to hearken to my voice. So Abraham's fathers, I don't know if that includes, um, I mean, it, it definitely included Terah, his his father. I don't know if his grandfather was alive. Uh, probably a lot of his kindred uh, were giving into these, um, you know, fallen practices, cr corrupted practices after the flood, right? Um, <clears throat> for their hearts were set to do evil and were wholly turned uh, to the God of Elkanah, and the God of Libna, and the God of Mamakra, and the God of Korash, and the God of Pharaoh, king of Egypt. So I, I'm assuming here that I guess the Egyptian counterfeit priesthood and their, their religion had probably spread beyond Egypt and into the land of Cal the Chaldeans. Uh, that's what I take from that. Uh, therefore, they turned their hearts to sacrifice uh, to the sacrifice of the heathen and offering up their children unto these dumb idols and hearken, un hearken not unto my voice, but endeavored to, to take away my life by the hand of the priest of Elkanah. The priest of Elkanah was also the priest of Pharaoh. I think there's a lesson here because if you are in a relationship with somebody, whether it's a parent, a sibling, a friend, um, or even a, a child, you know, they may, they may not be looking to offer you up uh, in a literal sense, like to be burned and sacrificed to a God, but um, you do have people in your lives that will offer you up and not care about your spiritual, your spiritual well-being, right? And they will use you as a tool um, for, for whatever it is, you know, we're all individual, but, uh, and this kind of like goes into the topic of like narcissism, you know, if, if you're in contact or have a relationship with a narcissistic person, they're using you for whatever your value is to them. And uh, it's usually not in, <clears throat> in harmony with the gospel, right? So, you know, you have people that have, for example, trophy wives, or you have people that uh, basically force their kids to make them look good. Um, or you, you may have um, people that essentially you you get to do your, whatever you want to do. You, you basically turn people into your own little followers and possibly even slaves um it's not good and that's something that can easily come out of family relationships if you have if you have unrighteous parents that try and get you to do things that really aren't in your interest um they're doing it for for themselves and whatever their agenda is and uh you know a lot of times this will this will happen when it comes to the gospel because the gospel 
usually flies in the face of people that want to do bad things. Not always, because you do have wicked people in the church that may be using the church for their image. And so like you going to church is actually working to their benefit, you know, kind of like Pharisees and such. But, um, you know, I, I don't need to tell you, I'm sure that all of you have people that they're not a big fan of the church and it's, uh, it's a problem and they want to get that out of you. And um, so anyway, let, let, let's continue here. Um, going to verse 16. And his voice was unto me, uh, the Lord, Abraham, Abraham, behold, my name is Jehovah, and I have heard thee and have come down to deliver thee and to take thee away from thy father's house and from all thy kinsfolk into a strange land, which thou knowest not of. Uh, and then down to 27. Now, Pharaoh, being of that lineage by which he could not have the right to the priesthood, notwithstanding the Pharaohs would fain claim, uh, fain claim it from Noah through Ham. Therefore, my father was led away by th their idolatry. So <clears throat> Terah, Abraham's father, was uh, deceived and was, going, was taking part or following this false uh, priesthood. Uh, and then verse, verse 30, accordingly, a famine prevailed throughout all the land of Chaldea, and my father was sorely tormented because of the famine, and he uh, repented of the evil which he had determined against me to take away my life. So, you know, whenever I think about famines like that, whether it's uh, this story with Abraham or the famine which caused uh, Israel and his family to move to Egypt, um, you know, I think there's a lesson there. It's like a, it's like a, they're talking about literal famines, but like, if you look at this story in a spiritual sense, you think about the spiritual famines uh, in life. You know, I, I would say that right now uh, in the world, there's a, a really large spiritual famine going on. And, um, and there's people that spiritually die because of it. Um, you know, I'm not going to read the rest of like the whole story, but basically Abraham's uh, brother died, um, you know, and, and we know that there's people in our lives that they, you know, especially now as, as we're seeing a great sifting and a great separating of wheat and tares, you know, there are people that are falling away from the church. They're, they're dying spiritually of this famine, uh, but the Lord has a promised land for us. And interestingly, Abraham, so he, he left his kindred back in Ur and he, he went to the land of Canaan, which he was promised. That was his promised land. Um, he brought whoever would follow him, including uh, Lot and his wife and, and family. And, you know, so he, he left. He left that wicked place that tried to sacrifice him, that was sacrificing other people that were idolatrous and, and um, worldly. And I think that that's something that we need to, need to do ourselves. We need to look at the situation in which we find ourselves in our homes or at school, our circle of friends, and think about, you know, are we being, are they trying to sacrifice us? Are they trying to convert us to, you know, the to worldly ways? And, um, you know, I, I think probably all of us have people like that in our lives. And it's important to, you um, be careful who you associate with and who you allow to influence you, right? First and foremost, it should be Christ, right? And then on the earth, we have a prophet. So we should listen to the prophet and follow him. He is the, the mouthpiece uh, of Christ. And, um, you know, sometimes, uh, depending on the situation, you may actually have to move to a different location, maybe a different city, uh, maybe a different state. It, it just depends. And there's nothing wrong with that. Um, in fact, if you move, especially if you're in a big LDS community like Utah, if you move somewhere where the church doesn't really have a strong presence, you're doing that area a favor with your presence. You're bringing the gospel with you in your influence and you're strengthening that part of the vineyard. Uh, and that, that's been the case with us moving here to Kansas. And I, I've done videos about that. But uh, my point is, uh, even though we love family, um, our love for the Lord should come first. And there are times when we do need to separate ourselves, even if it's from family members. 
if they're weighing us down spiritually, if they're uh, abusing us in any way, psychologically, financially, physically, you know, whatever, leave, leave, look at Abraham, follow his example. Don't stay in Ur, no, the city of Ur. Don't stay in Chaldea. Uh, go to your promised land. Don't let people hold you back. Um, go to where you are going to be spiritually safe and physically safe as well. So, you know, that's a thought that I, I've had recently, and I wanted to share that. Um, I'll put the links below so you can go to these um, specific scriptures and um, check those out. Uh, if you haven't already, please make sure to subscribe, like this video if you liked it, hit the notification bell, uh, comment, and then share this video on your social media, and I'll talk to you guys later.